There are basically two different things we need to do to make 3D, these clips actually be 3D. We've got to give them a dominance on their eyes, whether it's left or right eye. We've got to give them a group, and then we actually have to sync these. So we're going to break these down in the individual steps. We want to first go ahead and give them a dominant eye. I've already built, and you can do this under headings, choose columns. I've already built a view here called 3D Basics, and the two items I want are the 3D channel and the group name, and you'll see that they're both currently unnamed. I'm going to go ahead and start off by getting these into left and right groups, and to do that, I'll need a pair of bins. One will be called left, one will be called right. I'm just going to put these below. And this is a quick and easy way to go ahead and give these the proper channel that they're going to need. So I'm going to sift. We'll take just the L's, select all. I'm going to drag the L's to the left side. Let's then show unsifted. Select all the rights, put them down here. Take all the left eyes, take all the right eyes. Once again, choose our 3D basic views. Select all, and then I'm just going to change these all to left eye, change these all to right eye, and I'm going to put them all back into a single bin. With these all in a single bin, they're going to need a group name. And this all, I'll go back and I'll choose to sort these again, and I can do that under the right click. Uh, sort where I can go up to the bin menu and say sort. So you can see they're alternating left and right eyes. They're going to be grouped based on the group name and you can go ahead and you could manually give them a group name. For example, this shot here, that shots of a rock face. We could sit back and say rock face and type it twice and get it perfect. But the damage is that if you even don't have an, a capitalization, if you just have any difference, it can get get you in the trouble. I'm going to do this by the auto population ability. I'm going to select them both, right click and say, populate the groups automatically. And it does it based on the first choice, the left eye in this case. So this is the only part that's not great is you got to go through and do each pair of these clips with it populating the names. With them all populated, I'm going to create a new bin here called sync. And all that remains is for us to select all these clips, go up to the bin menu, say create stereoscopic clips, take a good long look at this dialog box. I want to put them into 3D sync. We're going to consider clips from the current bin that's selected. Use the time code from the left eye, name the clips using the group name. You could also choose uh, the clip name or a default timecode contributor. We're going to say consider audio tracks and none of the clips. Let's say all the contributing clips or the default contributor. Again, this is the in our case the left eye. Set the leading eye being left. Don't worry if you don't know what this means. Contribute using source timecodes. If you ever found that your sync was off, you could use an endpoint or an outpoint to to sync a pair of clips. I'm going to go ahead and say okay. When we're done, we've got a bunch of clips. They're all synced. I'm going to double click and you can see they look kind of funky and blurry. And I'll show you how to play with the media composer monitor in our next movie. But that's basically what you need to do. You bring in your clips, you take your clips, you give them a channel for their eye, you give them a group name, you then choose create stereoscopic clips, and I put them in a separate bin that I call sync.